Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, this is the uh, July 22nd, 2022 uh, meeting of the uh, City of San Diego Commission on Police Practices um, uh, Ad Hoc Transition Planning Committee. And uh, I will uh, do the roll from uh, the uh, Zoom screen. And so I'm Doug Case. I am the uh, first vice chair of the commission and chair of this committee. Uh, we have uh, commissioners uh, Patrick Anderson, a member of the committee, and also our outreach chair, uh, Commissioner Diana Dent, uh, Commissioner Nancy Vaughn. Um, we have uh, Kate Evan Detty, who is with Women Occupy in our liaison with San Diegans for Justice. Uh, we have uh, additional staff members, Robin Resendez, uh, who is our complaints coordinator, and then Alita Conde, who is our executive assistant. And uh, we have our outside legal counsel, Dwayne Bennett, and uh, our uh, executive search consultant, David Niemeyer. And uh, did I mention Charmaine, our interim executive director? I don't remember whether I mentioned her or not, but I think I got everybody. If I didn't, if you could raise your hand, otherwise that'll be the role. And it looks like uh, we have joining us uh, Brandon Hilpert, uh, who is the chair of the commission. And uh, so if you can go ahead and put up the agenda, I don't know who's, sure who's controlling the, uh, looks like Robin is, okay. And that you can scroll down. And uh, before we do public comment, uh, I'd like to make a change uh, to the agenda. So if you can scroll down. Um, and two things, I'd like to uh, do a new business uh, prior to unfinished business, because uh, uh, that's more time sensitive. And then instead of uh, item uh, 6C on the agenda, um, it says agenda for the commission retreat. Uh, we'll replace that uh, by the uh, document that David sent to us earlier today on the uh, roles of uh, the various participants in uh, the employment search processes. And uh, so with that, uh, we can go back up to the top and uh, did we receive any uh, public comments via the web, uh, Charmaine? I don't believe there were. Okay, and it's possible that Charmaine had to step out. Um, and is there any member of the public? I know we have uh, uh, at least one attendee. Uh, if any of the... Uh, Kate has her hand up, by the way. Okay, and I was going to get to any of the attendees and then I'll do Kate, uh, but it doesn't look like uh, any of the attendees have their hands up. So go ahead, Kate. I was just going to say I didn't receive anything from Mr. Niemeyer, so I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, if somebody could forward. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Kate. I Let me send that to you now. Yeah. And so that wasn't available. At, in time to attach to the agenda and uh, we'll be sending it to you now. And and for some reason, I don't have a separate raise hand and lower hand function on my computer today. So um, <laughs> it may just stay up. I can't, I can't figure out how to take it down. Okay, I'll, just, okay. I'll just raise my hand if you I want to talk. Now. Okay, yeah, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, feel free to interrupt if, we, if I don't see your hand or, um, if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, the bottom right hand side, you'll see a little thing that says reactions. If you click on yeah, that, I did. Um, that's how, that's okay. how I did the first time, but I just did it again. And it, oh, there it is. I came up again. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, updates nothing new on the budget process. Uh, the uh, staffing process, uh, we are moving forward with the uh, supervising investigator. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, sequence of uh, all the various positions under new business. Um, and I'm not aware of any uh, staffing issues. Uh, 
other than those that are covered under business that we want to talk about now, unless the Charmaine has an update. Okay, seeing none. Um, I did receive, I'm not sure whether everybody received it or not, uh, but Charmaine sent me a uh, email prior to this meeting uh, indicating uh, that the city council is having a closed session on uh, Tuesday uh, and uh, on the closed session agenda is uh, the implementation ordinance and meet and confer. And so they, members of the city council will be giving direction to, uh, to the negotiating team. Uh, we have no idea what those issues are, uh, but at least that's a good sign that things are moving, uh, moving forward. Uh, I'm sorry, Doug, I have a question. Does that mean that meet and confer hasn't begun yet, but will oh. begin after that meeting? Or does that mean that meet and confer has already happened? Well, it means the meet and confer is in process. And so I think if I understand it correctly, uh, what uh, happens is if there are issues that come up uh, in meet and confer, uh, that the negotiating team needs to get uh, direction from the city council on how to uh, proceed. On that particular issue, they bring that issue uh, to uh, them in closed session, and so. And then, is there any potential of the commission requesting that Brandon and or you and or Charmaine be allowed to attend that session? Since we weren't allowed to attend, meet and confer, but it would it. I mean that this would be something if we could go, if you all, one of you three, could go. Uh, so. I don't know, is Charmaine on yet or is she off? Uh... I said she is, but I could probably quickly touch base on that. We, we did send that memo uh, to HR and, and everybody. Uh, and we were basically told if we need advice or guidance from you guys as the commission, we know how to contact you. So I think the short answer is, is no, we realistically probably will not be asked to participate in that. So that was my sense too, is that it would be a, um, exercise and futility to request it based upon what they told us previously. Um, office. Oh, I'm Sorry. back. Okay. So, uh, um, go I, ahead. Yeah, I have my hand raised. Um, I just wanted to clarify. I don't think that it is for the um, the meet and confer for the implementation ordinance. Um, they reached out to me yesterday evening, requesting um. Inf I guess requesting an answer for one of their questions regarding the amended interim and operating procedure. Oh, okay. I think that's to update them on that. I don't think it's for the implementation ordinance. Oh, okay. And so the uh, <clears throat> the interim operating procedure issue is uh, allowing us to uh, comment on uh, officer involved shootings uh, that occurred during that period of time um, between when the uh, Commission came into existence, and uh, we have approved uh, investigation procedures. Um, okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, so, but I have heard that the meeting confer is uh, ongoing for the implementation ordinance, um, and I have no idea what the issue is regarding the interim operating procedures. Uh, but that. Uh, raises the question, if it's regarding the interim operating procedures that came from us um, and we were involved in the meeting confer on the uh, interim operating procedures initially. So we should be involved in the uh, meeting confer on the amendment, I would think. Um, but whether or not we would be invited to a closed session of the city council would be a different issue. Um, Charmaine, can you follow up uh, with the uh, with the city on that and see why we weren't invited to the uh, interim operating procedures? Because I, in the previous memo indicated that if, if something was initiated by the commission, uh, like the interim operating procedures, we would be involved. And obviously, the amendment was initiated uh, by us. Um, and so I guess there's two questions is, uh, uh, why weren't we invited uh, to the uh, meet and confer regarding the amendment to the interim operating procedures? 
um, and um, and I guess the second issue is, is regarding the uh, closed session of the uh, of the city council, and maybe maybe at the very least we can find out what the issue is that they're going to be uh, be discussing. So, so Charmaine would be able to do that. Yes, I will. Um, and I think it's just for an update. You had a um, question as to how how we um, store records. Okay, and I so uh, to that question. Yeah, and so I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what the issue is because we're not obviously involved. I'm, you know, you would think that uh, it should not be a big issue for us to continue doing what we have been doing. Um, but uh, you never know. Um, office space, uh, nothing new other than uh, there's the city. Charmaine sent a letter to uh, Dream, which is a department of real estate assets and uh, whatever else it is. I forget to remain. Uh, and we're told that there's another. Uh, uh, project ahead of us in terms of approving the contract and that they would review ours next. And so the, um, the contract for the space uh, is still under review, uh, but it's high on their uh, to-do list. But nothing new in terms of standing rules, anything new in terms of community outreach? No. Okay. And um, I think new in terms of meetings with the mayor and city council members, but we may want to uh, give them an update. Um, and uh, there's a couple of issues that have arisen that they may be interested in uh, uh, updates from us on. Um, I'm thinking of discussion of the uh, process or the uh, hiring of the permanent executive director and um, the issue of whether or not uh, the uh, commission should have access uh, to shooting review board reports. And I guess a broader issue of uh, the, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and like I said, we will re we will reverse the uh, old business and new business. We may not get a chance to get to a unfinished business, um, but the sequencing of the executive job searches. Uh, it would be nice if we had a, uh, a whiteboard with magnets that we can move things around, <laughs> but we don't. Uh, but I counted, hold on a second here, total of, uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven searches uh, that we need to uh, conduct. Um, they are the um, community engagement uh, coordinator, uh, the uh, supervising investigator, uh, the senior financial analyst, uh, the deputy executive director, the policy analyst, uh, the performance auditor, and then collectively the three investigators. And so our task today is to rank them one through seven in terms of the order. Uh, and uh, then our recommendation will be on the agenda for the commission for approval. Um, so maybe to get started, um, we already have uh, the uh, community engagement. Doug. Doug, yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Do you happen to have headsets and a microphone? There's a lot of weird, or Dave, it might be coming through your phone. It looks like you're highlighted right now. There's a lot of weird f feedback I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm at my office. That takes care of it. So Dave, Doug, you're good. Thank you, Dave. <clears throat> okay. Can I, can I make um, a question? The senior management analyst position is a classified position, so that would not require an, an executive search. Right, but I still wanted to put it on the uh, on the uh, um, on the sequence, uh, so that we can add that to our timeline. 
Uh, so you, you're right. You are correct. That's not a uh, something that uh, we would. It's not an executive search, um, but it is a search. And so, um, so let me start uh, with the uh, supervising investigator, which is in process, and the uh, community engagement coordinator. Um, and our, our initial plan was to do the uh, community engagement position uh, as the next one, followed by the uh, supervising investigator. Um, and so, you know, my recommendation is that we uh, proceed with those two, um, maybe in that order, the community engagement coordinator and the supervising investigator, uh, uh, Patrick. If someone would allow me to share my screen, I've got a Word document open where I can actually type these out so that we can all see what the list is. Okay. That, if that would be helpful for others, I need to be able to see them in a list to know. So if others are okay with that, you can, is that is that something I should do? I'm getting yeses. Yeah, okay. that's a good idea. And, and, and that's probably the second best to having a whiteboard with magnets. And so um, do you have the seven, then let me go ahead and list the seven positions, not in order, but let me just, well, maybe put a space there and then we can put the others and then we can move them up. So the performance uh, analyst, I'm sorry, the performance auditor and the policy analyst. Okay. Uh, the deputy executive director. Uh, uh, the senior uh, financial analyst. Okay. And um, the three investigators collectively. And am I missing one? One, two, three, four, five. No, we got, we got all seven. And uh, so then going back to where we were, is there any objection to having number one and number two uh, being the supervising investigator? Well, the key yeah, that order there, okay. Seeing none. Um, Charmaine, how soon do you plan on doing the senior financial analyst? As soon as possible. Okay, so would you be comfortable as listing that as number three? I think it could go along with um, one and two. Yeah, well, and, and some of these may be, uh, you know, kind of concurrent. Uh, so yes. since that's internal, the senior financial analyst right. position will be working on internally. Okay, and uh, then maybe put uh, seven as the three investigators. Um. Okay, and then we have uh, the issue is uh, the deputy executive director, the policy analyst, and the uh, performance auditor. Um, I know some of us had you know, questions about the deputy executive director position, but those have been determined by a majority vote of the, uh, of the commission. Um, my initial thought, and I'll get to you, Patrick, I see your hand raised, um, is that uh, in the organization chart that uh, Charmaine sent to us, uh, the deputy executive director will be the uh, supervisor of the performance auditor and the policy analyst. And if that's the case, it may make sense to hire the deputy executive director prior to hiring the performance auditor and the policy analyst. So let me throw that out there, and then I'll see Patrick, and then I shoot Kate's hand up. Yeah, so I was thinking in the opposite direction. It seems to me that the deputy executive director should be hired once the executive director position is permanent. Um, since now that we have a, a deputy executive director, that seems like a crucial positive working relationship. It's absolutely crucial that, that, that those two people be able to work together well. Um, and in the meantime, it seems to me that one of our biggest, that, that policy analyst is one of our biggest needs. I mean, we have so many policy questions that are constantly filtering through this committee and through the commission and just through all kinds of things. And so having a policy analyst sooner makes sense to me. Um, 
the the performance auditor can i have some clarification of what that role is i'm just not remembering but in any in any case i would argue that policy analyst should be the f number four hire um and then depending on the answer to the performance auditor question i think you know the deputy executive director i feel should be hired once the executive director position is once it's a permanent executive director okay in terms of the performance auditor and we were talking previously about doing the performance auditor and the policy analyst kind of in tandem um, but the uh, performance auditor would uh, among other things look at the compliance with the uh, state federal and local guidelines uh, but they might also do uh, the types of audits that the city just did with regard to body worn camera okay in that case i think that is an extremely important position <laughs> and those are functions that we just need i mean right now I think Charmaine's doing the best she can do in terms of getting answers to questions and calling in people who can answer them when she can't get the answer. Um, but Charmaine has a, you know, Charmaine is, is carrying a lot of other stuff right now. And especially as we move forward with new standard operating procedures, the implementation ordinance, a new office structure, I think having people in place who can get those answers to us, I just, I think that's crucial. Thanks. Okay, Nancy. Did we give up on the deputy executive director? I thought we were going to just reissue that. What did I miss, Doug? No, we, we have the deputy executive director, uh, but we didn't decide when we're going when we are going to uh, begin the search for that. I thought we were going to do it immediately. That wasn't what the motion was at the, at the commission. The commission was even do the community engagement coordinator immediately. And so now we, so now we need to decide whether we're, you know, what the order of it, uh, order of it is. Do you have a, do you have a, do you have a uh, yes. opinion on when it should be done? Number two. Prior to the supervising investigator? Yes, as soon as possible. I, I consider that one to be essential. Okay. I would say the supervising investigator should still be important because I we've already be, we've already begun that, and we also need that person to be involved in the uh, uh, development of the investigation procedures, which we are in the in the process of doing. Um, but uh, do we, we hear you? And uh, Kate, I just want to say I strongly agree with Patrick, and um, I don't really have anything to add to that. I. Uh, I think I, I believe I said that at the special meeting and I will say it again and I will continue to say it, that I think the um, deputy executive director, as Patrick said, um, should come once there is a um, permanent executive director, because I, I think, as you said, that they're going to be working together. And then if you, if we, you hire a deputy executive director and then you have a different permanent director, that could be very problematic. Okay. Uh, Charmaine, you had your hand up and you took it down. Do you, I think we, we'd like for you to weigh in on. Hold, hold on one second. Oh, she may be dealing with her dog issue. Um, while she's doing that, uh, can we, uh, See if we can get a consensus on whether we should proceed with the supervising investigator um, con concurrently uh, with the uh, community engagement coordinator. Uh, is there anybody besides Nancy who is opposed to uh, having the supervising investigator be the next hire after the coordinator, after the engagement community engagement coordinator? Okay. And uh, Jermaine, are you back? It's hard to tell. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Um, I disagree as far as the DED position goes to have it lower on the list. It is a priority just because this commission is being built from the ground up. I do not expect the commissioners to understand the amount of work it takes to build up this commission. Um, we had it as a priority. Um, a few months ago before the position was bifurcated. Um, there will be an increase in staff as well as management duties. We need to have a second in charge. Um, I know and I hear, you know, 
um, our panel's concerns about you know having that position start when there's a new executive director or um, a permanent executive director. But you know, as we all know, with these positions, these positions are at will, exempt, unclassified positions. So people come and go all the time in these positions. Um, just because you have a, a, a e -E an executive director does not mean that that person will be there long term. That person might come in and decide that they don't, you know, that that the um, deputy executive director is not performing as that person should. So I think, you know, being on the inside and and knowing the work of this commission and for the office of the commission on police practices, it was a recommendation from the personnel department that we have a second in charge and to put it lower on the list will do a disservice to the commission. Okay. Uh, who hasn't weighed in yet. Uh, Brandon, do you have a thoughts on this? No, I mean, I, I kind of already said, I think the, the deputy executive director is important, especially because, um, you know, there's potentially two positions that would have to report to that individual. Um, and so I think it'd be helpful for that person to be on board before we start to do those hirings. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it being positioned like three or four, but I don't think we should push it too much further down. Okay, uh, Diana. I agree with Brandon. In fact, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think it's important if we're going to hire these two or three positions, then if they're going to be supervised by and reporting to, um, it's best to have the executive director in place. You know, we we all have had new administrators come in. When, you know, as as a an educator, you you work to the best of the community and to the best of the commission. And I think. If, if the person who's coming in can't can't do that, then we we're doing a disservice to the to the um, to the commission and to the community. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound like we have a consensus, but it sounds like a majority of the group here thinks that we should put the deputy executive director probably as number four, and then maybe policy analyst is number five, and performance auditor is number six. Uh, and what I was thinking is that we could. Uh, uh, and making the presentation to the full commission indicate a uh, minority uh, position, um, which would, uh, so that would be the, that would be the order. And, uh, and then the minority position, I think, if I understand correctly, would be to move uh, the deputy executive director position to the bottom of the list uh, as number seven and move everything else up uh, with the intent of having that position hired when there is a permanent executive director. Doug, I just want to point out there's an attendee with their hand who's had their hand up for a while and then okay. two people on the committee too. Okay, I don't know why those are not showing up on my screen, but thank you for. Um, I don't know why the attendees don't. Uh, so, uh, Evie is the attendee. Uh, and by the way, Brandon just sent me a text that he has to sign off in a few minutes, uh, like now, <laughs> to attend uh, the boards and commission chairs meeting. And so, uh, uh, if he pops off, that's why. And um, so, we will. And I guess we should have probably asked for uh, public comment um, when we first introduced it, uh, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, give Evie a chance for public comment. And then I see Kate and uh, Nancy have their hands up. So Evie, if you can unmute and uh, speak. Thank you. I had to get you to unmute me. Um, I'd like to make a comment that the executive director keeps getting brought up um, and why it's not on the list. Because perhaps it should be pretty high on the list because I, I very much think that the executive director should pick their own deputy and there may be other of those that they would like to even um, have some say about uh, that will be their boss. And 
I don't know of any job you usually apply for that's very high in an organization where you don't know who your boss is going to be and that those or the boss know who the hiree is. It's a very important relationship. Um, so I am strongly suggesting that you decide when the deputy executive uh, is going to, I mean, the main executive is going to be the executive director and do that relatively soon. Um, I don't know why that is not being considered. Thank you. Okay, we, we can add the uh, permanent executive director to the list. Uh, I can answer your question and that the commission, uh, the commission already has decided uh, that we do not, we will want to let the uh, permanent commission be involved in the hiring of the uh, permanent executive director. Uh, so Kate and then Nancy. Uh, thank you. You know, I think it would be helpful to me if I saw a job description of the deputy executive director, because really the job description we had before was really for the uh, community engagement person. And it was just renamed deputy executive director and a couple of administrative duties were added. But now you're talking about how they're going to be supervising these other positions. And so it would be really helpful and probably to other people if we could put together what that position would be doing and, well, and then what the executive director position would be doing so that we could see what is being you know, what load is being taken off the uh, executive director and put on the deputy. And um, that would really help me make this decision because this is the first I heard that they would be supervising these additional positions. Okay, yes, the, uh, well, and actually the uh, draft of the uh, deputy executive director position is on the agenda for today and is attached to the agenda. Um, and, um, Oh, and so maybe I didn't, if, uh, I didn't realize that was attached, but, so I didn't see it. Okay. And but uh, Doug, this this includes all the community engagement stuff on it. I didn't understand what this was because if you right where Robin is right now, all of these bullet points are from the community engagement search. So I wasn't clear on what this was when I read it. It just I thought it was just an older well, draft. Well, well, Okay, let's, let's scroll down to the deputy. Uh, this is the community engagement coordinator. Scroll down. Oh, sorry, the, but the de the yeah the deputy is the same. It's the same things the, on, on a few of these. So, establish, okay. build, develop, expand awareness. There are some new things, but there I, it felt like this was. Actually, it's, it's, it is substantially different. Um, and when we when we talk about uh, talk about it, uh, we probably ought to mention specifically some of the positions they will be uh, supervising. Uh, but maybe you can just for people who haven't had a chance to look at it yet, uh, maybe just scroll up just a little bit more so we can have all the bullets on the screen if you could, and uh, give people a chance to look at that. And yeah, then, uh, Doug, now I'm seeing that I confused these two because there are these new administrative bullet points that I must have just read right over. Okay. And then, uh, so Nancy, were you, I'm sorry, were you done, Kate? Okay. And then Nancy? I can't read it now because this is the community engagement one that's up. Okay. Was that Nancy talking or? Uh... It was Kate. Okay. And Nancy, did you want to say something? Yeah, I don't understand the disconnect between what's on my screen and the fact you can hear me. Um, I guess I missed the bubble when we bifurcated those two positions because I thought we were pretty well into looking for a deputy executive director. Um, and it sounds like you're saying we just dropped that one. And I don't mind that we were would be looking first for a community engagement coordinator, but I do think the deputy executive director should come next. Okay. That's well, what we were looking at in the first place because that's what we need. And so, um, uh, I, can, uh, can, you, can you see the screen where we're talking about the? Uh, um, I can see that. Yes. 
Okay. And I'm not so, trying to read it. So, but Nancy, that's inaccurate. That isn't true. So, what we decided was that the next position we should search for. This is months ago on this committee that the next oh. position to search for was the community engagement person. That's fine. I, and it was it was only it was only in conver conversations with HR that Charmaine realized that na that sort of folding in the deputy executive director title and some of the responsibilities to that one would have certain effects on the search. But the implications of the vote at last week's meeting were that the search ended, it's over. All those candidates are now told that, it, that there's not, that position is not available. And we have to start from, we're, we're starting from scratch in the sense that the search process has to start all over. Can we have um, Dave? Chairman, please. Right. Well, we're waiting for him. To, I mean, it does have to start from scratch and we have to begin the search, uh, but uh, people who were interested in the uh, prior position may, may be interested in the uh, community engagement uh, position. And so we would, I assume, reach out to them and let them know what the new position is, and there may be some individuals who uh, weren't, you know, didn't make the cut for the uh, deputy executive director position because they didn't have the managerial experience uh, that uh, may be uh, considered for the community engagement coordinator this time. But did you have any additional thoughts on that, Dave? Looks like he's trying to unmute himself. <laughs> There you go. Yes, um, there are some candidates that did apply for the deputy director position that I think would be interested and qualified for the community engagement coordinator. I don't know if that answers your question, Nancy, but yes, there, we would do a new search, uh, but, there, but the people who were in the previous pool would be notified and given an opportunity to uh, apply. Well, I guess we would do both searches. They would be, we would notify the people who applied before so if they're interested in either of the bifurcated positions so patrick do you mind putting back up but because i want to move on because we have a lot of things to talk about today you're uh, uh can you share your screen again okay and so can you add a, a number eight of uh, permanent executive director and then in parentheses once permanent commission is seated. Okay, and then uh, have that as option one. So have this whole thing be option one. And then option two is, uh, you can just copy that, then I'll tell you what to move around. Okay, and option two, oops. <laughs> Uh, you have to figure out how to do the numbering again, but uh, okay. Um, would be uh, move, take the deputy executive director and put that at the very end because that person would then be hired by the permanent executive director. Okay. And so those seem to be the uh, two options that uh, people in this committee are advocating for one or the other. Um, and uh, we don't have a consensus, but we have more vote for option one. And so we'll present both options to the commission on uh, Tuesday and let them make the decision. I have another question, Doug. Okay. It has to do with senior financial analyst i maybe i've missed everything that's been going on but i thought robin was doing that job right now am i wrong well you're not wrong but what we decided uh based on experience was that the job of uh, being uh, the uh, complaints coordinator is really a full-time job and uh, the uh, financial analyst position which involves uh, more than just bookkeeping but also is uh, budget management uh, needs to be a separate job and that's a higher level of uh, financial 
due days uh, than are in robins. And so we included in the in the new budget uh, that new position of a financial analyst, which will then, once we add that person on board, uh, Robin will would be solely responsible for uh, complaints coordination, and the other person will be responsible for the uh, financial. Okay. okay, I'll go back to sleep. I just think <laughs> you guys keep putting deputy executive director lower than it really should be, and I think it should be right at the top right after community engagement coordinator. And that, that would be my feeling that it, we were already working in that direction. And I think that's absolutely what is, what is needed, but that I'll just go okay. to sleep. Okay, well, we can have that discussion on, uh, on Tuesday. Charmaine, do you have anything before we move on? Cause I want yes, to I, I just want to remind this um, committee that um, the roles of the commissioners are very clear and that's for case review. Um, it's also for evaluating office-involved shootings and policies and procedures. Staffing is not the role of this commission. It's the role of the executive director. So I just wanted to remind everyone of that, especially because there's a backlog of cases and we need commissioners to work on those cases. So um, I just wanted to comment on that as well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand, but I didn't understand, Charmaine, what you said is not the role of the commissioners. Your, your, your audio, at least on my side, is a little fuzzy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kate. I'm trying to tend to this while I'm <laughs> multitasking here. Yes, the role of the commission is very clear, and that's to review cases, um, you know, evaluate, plans as well as um, you know look at policies and procedures it's not staffing and it's not hiring of staff it's the role of the executive director the reason that um, this all came to the transition committee is because we didn't have staff last year we didn't have an executive assistant we did not have an admin aide and I was doing the work of a lot of um, employees um, so you know, charge was, you know I asked the transition committee for help as far as um, creating that DED job description. I just wanted to make it clear that we should not be spending a lot of time on this because it is really not the role of this commission to be um, making decisions as to the staffing. There can be, you know, there can be recommendations for consideration, but not, um, you know, our decision. Okay, if we can move on, um, we can put the agenda back up. Um, and Nancy, your hand is still up, but is that from the previous one? Okay, if you go back to the agenda, the next one is the, um, uh, is the job descriptions. Uh, I'm not sure based on the discussion whether everybody's had a chance to look at the uh, job descriptions. Uh, for those that have, did you have any, uh, any specific uh, concerns? Um. Well, I had had the concern because I apparently was reading too quickly. But now that I've reread the deputy executive director, um, I, I guess my only question is then if you look at the DED right where you are, Robin, thank you. Um, Uh, I guess I do have a question then about the community input put. So that's the second red bullet point here, assist in efforts, that one. Um, I like that establish, build, develop, and maintain effective relationships is also included here. Um, but this right here where it says assist in efforts, there, there's an overlap there with the community engagement coordinator. So I just wanted to ask Charmaine, does that language create and given your higher your your or your org chart does that create any do, do you see that creating any conflict because the community engagement coordinator is directly reporting to the executive director do you see do you see what i'm asking yes i think so and i think that with these positions these positions are very fluent um, the community engagement coordinator will be basically responsible for, um, you know, going out there in the community and um, doing those, um, 
events as well as attending meetings for the community. As far as the DED position goes, that person still has to be out there in the community as well, building those relationships, um, you know, attending events on the weekends. It is an exempt position. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to also make, make sure that everybody is aware because there were some people that were not included in my email chain this morning, but these positions have to be approved by the civil service. Um, there's like charter section 117. So when I am actually creating these memos that goes before civil service, there's a lot of information that goes into there so that they can approve these positions and make them exempt. I, so, okay. So, so a part of why that's there is to help justify the exempt status because it is and, a part of the DED expectations, but yeah. also it needs to be explicit in order to get, I got, I got you. Yes, but there will be no overlap, you know, as a manager, you have to be, be able to make sure that that main person that's responsible for that is actually doing that. And then you have somebody else who was like maybe second in charge. They're going to be helping out with certain things as well, but we all have to be involved in this, um, um, oversight. Right. But I guess my question was about it because the community engagement coordinator is basically equal in this chart, like they don't report to the DED. So then the decision maker when it comes to community engagement is still the community engagement coordinator, right? I think it's, I would have to look back at the, um, Robin, can you pull up the job description? Although uh, you know, Patrick raises the point of maybe the community engagement coordinator should report to the deputy executive director. Mm -hmm. um, Scroll up some at the beginning. Yeah, it reports directly to executive director. Okay. So, you know, any thoughts on any thoughts on that? If you can put the uh, work truck back up, I'm... and I don't know, Doug, can I also make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the community engagement coordinator, even though we're starting out with the community engagement coordinator, you know, thinking about big picture, one person can't go around the whole city of San Diego, right? So eventually, that person is going to become the manager of community engagement, and there might be people underneath that person that that position will be supervising. So I see that down the line as that position growing into a more managerial, higher level position, but that'll be down the line. Okay. Two comments. Uh, one is that uh, there was a question about uh, whether or not the position would be exempt uh, because it did not go through the uh, civil service uh, process and Charmaine clarified that we are able to have that position as an exempt position. Uh, well, maybe maybe uh, rather than put words in your mouth, maybe you can clarify, Charmaine, why, why the community engagement coordinator uh, is able to be exempt. Charmaine, you're muted. Maybe she had to step out. Okay, I'm gonna go on then, and maybe when she comes back, we can we can do that. Uh, uh, we don't need to have this commit. I mean, as Charmaine pointed out, the development of job descriptions is a part of her duties. Uh, but if uh, people on the um, on this committee, uh, have uh, thoughts on any of the job descriptions? If you could email your uh, thoughts to uh, Charmaine, and then maybe she can make any revisions prior to uh, attaching them to the uh, to the agenda for the open meeting. But it's going to be on the open meeting for information only. The the whole commission isn't voting on job descriptions. Uh, that's not the role of the uh, role of the commission, and. Um, I will suggest to her that maybe we add something specifically into the job description, which lists uh, the positions that will be reporting to the deputy executive director. Okay. And then if we can move to the uh, third item of uh, new business, I 
put the agenda back up, please, Robin. Doug, I just want to put in that I disagree with that. I like the way Charmaine has arranged this so the community engagement coordinator reports directly to Charmaine, but we're not going to talk about that right now, I guess. No, that wasn't what I was saying. I was saying putting in the deputy executive director position, the two positions that, that were reported. Oh, I, I thought you were proposing that it be moved no, no, no. under. Gotcha. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make re reference to positions that, according to the org chart, will be reporting to them. Um, then the final item. Uh, and maybe it'd be helpful if um, I don't. Um, are you able to share your screen, David? Uh, no, I am not, unfortunately. Okay. Um, yeah. And is, is it because that you're not a co host? Do you know? Well, I, it's, I'm, I'm on my phone in my. Uh, Documents on my laptop. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can pull up the previous one, or maybe somebody else can pull up the previous one. Did you make any revisions after I sent you my comments? No, I, I haven't as of yet. I mean, your revisions are fairly simple. Uh, I think there needs to be obviously a discussion about what you said. Should it be a, a, a ranking? From okay, then, yeah, okay, then if, uh, does anybody have it readily accessible? So I don't have to, okay, can you put it up, uh, Patrick? If you could give me just a moment, please. I need to figure out where I was looking at it. Okay, and while you're doing that, the, the uh, two uh, recommendations that I made was to correct the name of the uh, uh, community uh, advisory panel to us. Uh, he put citizens and we use the term community instead of citizens because you don't have to be a citizen to serve on it. Um, and then I recommended, uh, as we were had recommended in our proposal for the permanent executive director search uh, that uh, candidates uh, not be ranked, uh, but we include uh, pros and cons. Our initial uh, work, uh, agreement uh, with uh, David indicated that they would be a uh, indicated ranking one, two, three. Uh, that came from our previous uh, uh, guidance to him, but we could change that. Uh, so um, why don't we do that issue first so we can get those. So I don't think there's any 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 problem with changing citizen to community, uh, but do we have any comments on whether or not uh, the uh, final candidate should be rank ordered? Uh, when given to the executive director, whether we should just list uh, the uh, pros and cons of each of the uh, applicants. Uh, Patrick. So when I have been on searches like this, where there's a final decision maker, but lots of groups before that are given a specific role in the process, um, it's been my experience that not having ranked lists is much better. And the reason is that it's very rare that a previous group will come to full consensus on candidates. Um, it's much better for the final decision maker if those intermediate groups say, you know, this group of three people were acceptable to us. We can see any of them being hired. Um, here are the, the things that stood out to us that are positive about each person. Here are the concerns that were expressed about each candidate. Um, and then for the, pre the, the step below that is the community advisory panel. It seems to me that a similar, um, a similar model is more helpful to someone in, in the executive director's position than if, than if they, they spend their time trying to get a, a ranked list. Um, that's been my experience in the past with this kind. So I agree with you for those reasons, Doug. Okay. Is there anybody who disagrees? Okay. Then we will. Uh, can I say one thing? This is Dwayne. I'm sorry. This is, and I just wanted to just clarify for you all, just to help out, uh, that you are ranking objectively, either through force ranking or through a scoring system, the candidates somehow that are coming before you. Correct. I mean, I, if, if yeah, yeah, but I guess rank order meant uh, one, two, and three as opposed to strengths and weaknesses. Right. Right. Okay. And another thing, can I just say one other thing, y'all? And this is this is not legal, but I just an observation uh, in terms of how you're filling your roles. This is totally on you. But as an outsider coming in, 
I have been in this position. It's great. I, I enjoy working with you all, but it's a very, very stressful position. And it's stressful because Charmaine works around the clock. This is no disrespect to Charmaine. I haven't talked to her about this. I hope it's not offensive to her. She works around the clock. And I'll get a text message or an email from the first of the morning until way at night. And I, I constantly walk around holding my phone because I don't know when she's going to buzz in or call or if an issue is going to rise. Somehow, somehow, Commissioner's Committee, you have to take some of this pressure off of her. And so you, you know, I mean, I understand saying that you want a new, the new executive director to appoint the deputy. Somehow she's got to get some help because it's too much. And some of the emails uh, and some of the, the information that I'm feeding to her that I need from the standpoint of working on your policies and procedures, I know she can't get to them. So I send her an email and it may sit because she doesn't have time to get to them because there are all these other things going on. So I is totally in your ball. I just, I just throw that out as consideration from somebody from the outside coming in, watching this uh, play out. Is she, she, she's, uh, being overworked uh, in the position and, and things are, are not going to get done ultimately. So just, just Okay, I'll, I'll take that as an endorsement of option A and our first proposal. And then so, uh, and I know Patrick has to leave shortly, so uh, maybe we can just go through the uh, four uh, paragraphs here. The first one is the role of the commission. Uh, But actually, that probably should be the role of this committee. No, I mean, at the top, so yeah. And, but, the, but the role of the uh, transition planning committee. Yeah, Charmaine pointed that out. That's okay. fine. Okay, and then the community panel, back for front of here, so we can work with Tara on questions and candidates, uh, complete uh, confidentiality. Uh, Okay, uh, anything on uh, the community panel? Just one addition, um, at the end of this, sub submit feedback forms. Um, so the way that we had talked to the previous community panel is that they can, they can choose as a panel to do that individually. They can also, because they were gonna have a meeting after all the interviews, they can also submit a sort of group statement about the applicants if they choose. Um, so I just wanna, it's, I just wanna- No, yeah, but that, that that, that's not what, uh, well, that's what you proposed. That's not what this committee agreed upon. And the city requires that each participant in the process submit their own um, their own evaluation. It's okay for them to meet prior to submitting it. And so they can do an initial ranking on their own and then they can have a, uh, a group discussion to give their impressions, uh, but each individual member of yeah in the process has to submit their own. So there wouldn't be. Oh yeah, the, no, e they understood they were each gonna submit their own, but there may, if there was some kind of consensus on the panel, they were going to submit an additional statement from the panel. Okay, um, we should check with Liz on that, uh, but uh, Liz was there when we discussed it, and she indicated that that was that that was totally fine. But I I agree with you that we should double check with yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, my, my point is that each person has to submit their own, and um, and, and she's doing a presentation on uh, at the open meeting. Uh, so maybe you can raise that question of. Uh, that specific question there. Um, Doug, I do have to go now. So I don't know if somebody else is able to share the screen or. Oh, OK. Um, does anybody else have it readily available? I tell you what, I'm just going to turn off my my. I'm just going to leave it on until you end this meeting, but I won't be here. I'm going to turn off my camera and just leave it up so you can. Oh, no, but then nobody can stop sharing. So. Um, why don't you put it down and I'll see if I can find it. In, okay. In the meantime. And is there anything else you wanted to say before you leave or are you leaving? Now? I, I want to say that what Duane said actually really resonated with me. And I want to, I want to sort of second his comment that 
this has this has not just been true for the last few months it's it's been true this entire two year process and before that Charmaine has been carrying the load of of four or five staff members even when we were a CRB and I, you know, I know that there's been there's been a lot of disagreement. There's been conflict in making decisions recently. But um, what Duane said is absolutely true, and it's something that none of us should forget. Charmaine works around the clock, and when she sends something to us, it is done correctly every time. Um, and I also receive emails at six in the morning, you know, so I just, Dwayne, I appreciate you putting that back on the table because that's something we've all witnessed for a really long time. And I think all of us share the goal of building up this commission um, so that it, the labor is shared by more people. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let me share my screen now, see if I can... Uh... Hopefully I'm sharing the right thing. Did that work? I think, um, okay, I'm not sure. Hold on a second here. Screen sharing, stop share, screen share. Uh, did that work? Good. Okay. I don't know what I did wrong the first time. Um, and then we can move on. And also change the name on, on the header from a citizen panel to a community panel. Uh, the uh, um, selection committee. Uh, uh, any thoughts on that other than changing the rank order to a, with a list of strengths and weaknesses? Okay. That would be my comment. Good. Okay, Kate, your hand is up. Did I? You're on, you're on mute. You're on mute, Kate. <laughs> Sorry. I just had a question about uh, if we could just point out what are the differences in this process from the the prior process, and and the only thing that I really saw is is having the. Um, uh, executive director participate in the selection committee. Um, but if, if you could point out any other differences, because we already had a process. Right, I think part of it was clarifying it. Uh, and I think uh, it, my reading is essentially the same. That seems to be the primary difference. Um, and so we can talk about that next, which is the interim executive director to give input to uh, HR on ideal Candidate attributes and priorities of position, uh, approve the recruitment brochure and outreach strategy prepared by uh, CPSHR, which is the consulting firm, participate in discussion and give feedback to the commission on recommended uh, semi-finalist uh, candidates. And that there again, instead of the commission, there should be the transition committee. Um, and so the, uh, so uh, I do. I do have another question. Okay, let me, let me finish reading that, then I can answer that. Uh, then participate as an observer in the selection committee interviews, and then interview the finalist uh, candidates and select the uh, top candidate. And so, uh, I think the difference there is that they would participate in the discussion of uh, the uh, the list of the. Uh, semi-finalists at the community panel would uh, observe, and then they would uh, attend as an observer the uh, selection committee interviews. Um, and uh, so th those were, I guess, the two major differences. And then I see Kate's hand up. I just had a, a question about um, who, who constitutes the selection committee. Well, the section committee we already determined. Uh, well, it, it doesn't say in here. That's all. I, my understanding is that it was the transition committee members, except for me. Is uh, that right? No, and initially it was going to be the cabinet, 
Oh. And then, then we changed it uh, because we no longer had a second uh, vice chair. Well, actually, you were also on it as well. So it was going to be the cabinet plus a community representative. And then we changed it uh, so that it was going to be for this position. And, then, and we don't need to put that in here for the, this is a kind of a generic one for all of them. Uh, but uh, for this position, it was going to be uh, myself and uh, Diana. And Kate, I believe, is that correct? Okay, but we don't want to specify that here because this is going to apply to all the future positions. And uh, in the future, we may have the selection committee um, may end up being the cabinet again once we get a full cabinet. And um, but maybe under selection committee, uh, we could put. Uh, I don't know, should we indicate that the selection committee normally would be consist of the cabinet and a community representative? Would that be okay? It's fine with me. Okay, does anybody have an objection to that? Okay, and so if you could put that under, um, oh wait, I'm, I can't do it on my screen because, or um, yeah. I guess- I'll I make all the changes and send it back to you today. Okay, so. no, that'd be fine. Okay, so if you could add that. And uh, well, we, we had a discussion before whether the executive director should participate in the uh, selection of the uh, uh, candidates that go before the uh, first uh, interviews. And, uh, and we decided not to, but to give the executive director the opportunity to uh, comment on any that we, uh, that we missed that they thought should should uh, be considered. Uh, the problem that arose was there was some information about the candidates that the committee didn't have access to uh, that may have been helpful in that process. And so like some of us, at least you know, I'll speak for myself, I think I'm reconsidering uh, uh, given our experience that it's probably beneficial to allow that person to participate. Um, that's not been my practice in the previous situations, but I think that uh, it may be uh, advisable here. Um, I don't know whether it's common practice to have the uh, final interviewer uh, observe the selection committee interviews. Um, and I'm not sure that they would be attending and just watching or whether they would uh, well, he says participate as an observer, so they would be observing it. Uh, so maybe David, who has a lot more experience than yeah. any of us do, can uh, discuss the role of the uh, interim executive director or the executive director. Sure. Doug, I mean, I will say I've seen it done both ways, but my recommendation, you know, if, if I was in Charmaine's position as the CEO, you know, seeing somebody go through multiple interviews and see how they react in front of different audiences gives you a lot of information on which to make a decision. And so I, I think it's helpful, you know, that I, I that if I were her, I would want to sit back and observe because that interview that she has with the selection committee could be different than the interview with her or could yield some information that she may want to bring up as questions in the finals interview. So I, my own philosophy is I think it's helpful to have the appointing authority in those meetings, um, sitting off to the side. Uh, I have seen it done both ways, but that that's my recommendation is to include her. Okay, so are there any objections to that? Okay, seeing none, uh, then it sounds like, uh, uh, so we, we, with those changes that we discussed, uh, changing the name from citizen panel to a uh, community panel, the role of the uh, transition planning committee, uh, as opposed to the role of the commission, indicating that the selection committee may consist of the cabinet and a community member, and that we are going to uh, list the, recommend the candidates with strengths and weaknesses rather than rank ordered. I think I got everything. If I missed anything, speak now. If not, no. I will have uh, David make those changes. You got those all, David? Yeah, and if I could just clarify, because the selection committee, because I, I found 
Uh, our original timeline, the selection committee was going to be the commission chair, first vice, vice chair, community outreach chair, and a community representative. Is that what we're still thinking? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we did that for this okay. position because we were looking at the community engagement coordinator. Okay. And I think that for the community engagement coordinator, that was particularly important. And that's okay. why I'm, I'm saying that the, the selection committee should be flexible. And that's why I'm saying the word may. Uh, so um, um, rather than shall, so the selection committee, it's, you know, may, may consist of the cabinet. Um, okay. And, there, and, there, and then we can change it. There may be a particular person with an expertise that we want on a particular panel. We, a person may not be available for a particular panel and so forth. Um, so you're saying may consist of members of the commission. Right. And are, and perhaps a community representative or, or no? I, I think we, we, we've kind of set as a uh, expectation that we're gonna have some type of a community okay. uh, member in the process, a, a non-commissioner. And then uh, other than the uh, community engagement coordinator, we haven't planned for a community panel. Uh, so I think it's important that we that we include that. Um, okay. And um, I didn't get to the second page, but I don't think there's any, uh, any questions about the second page. Um, yeah, most of this, the CPSHR things are in our contract, so that's just... Okay, then if, so if you could make those changes and send them uh, to uh, me and to uh, um, and to Charmaine. Okay. And then um, I'll see whether Charmaine wants me to include a uh, handout or an attachment for the uh, sequencing of the positions to attach to the minutes, I mean, to the agenda or not, I'll check with her. Um, and it's now 1.43. Uh, and so you can go back, back to the agenda. Um, so I guess I need to stop sharing so Robin can put the agenda back up. Uh, we're going to meet again uh, next uh, Friday, and let me just double check one thing. Uh, yeah, Friday should be okay. Um, I was going to say I'm coordinating a press conference, but it's on Thursday and not Friday, so I'm okay there. Um, and uh, so my suggestion is that we uh, go back to working on these standard operating procedures um, and uh, not list any additional items of new business unless something you know comes up. Uh, between now and next week that we need to address. And anything else that people wanna put on the agenda for next week? Okay, and uh, so I think we can adjourn. I think it was a productive meeting and uh, we'll see everybody on Tuesday.